Hello, my name is Veronica Kinsler. On behalf of all the authors of this paper, I'd like to just talk you through what we did in this study. So the traditional definition of mosaicism is the coexistence of cells with at least two genotypes in an individual derived from a single zygote. But the problems with this definition in the modern age is that we now know that everybody develops mutations in the womb with every single cell cycle, and that we all have mutations after birth as well in our tissues. So by this definition, we are all mosaic. So in our consensus uh, study here, we re-examined this issue and we concluded that a mosaic abnormality of the skin in this day and age could be defined as the coexistence of cells with at least two genotypes, as before, but by the time of birth, in an individual derived from a single zygote and which leads to a disease phenotype. We then talk about the phenotype of mosaicism and how this is unique in every patient and the reasons it is unique. And this is because there are very many variables that actually affect the phenotype. And we go through those in some detail in the paper. We also talk in detail about different conditions and the phenotypes that have been associated with different uh, conditions. We then also classify mosaicism. And we do this by genetic mechanism. And the reason we chose this was because actually it's clinically useful. Let me tell you why. I'm not going to go through this figure in detail, but it is in the paper. And what it demonstrates is if you think about uh, the mutations that are in the germline, if there are any, and then about the mutation that happens in the womb, it will allow you to decide whether there is a risk for that patient's offspring. So this is a no, yes, yes, no. And that is a very good way of actually managing the patient if you know what the genetic information is. And last of all, we have published a general approach to the suspected mosaic patient. This is a general management approach for anyone you think has mosaicism. It involves clinical aspects, investigation of non-cutaneous features, and then investigation of histology and genetic diagnosis. We've also included all the different references which are up to date at the moment for whether there are guidelines for management of the patients. That's it.